Hi, I'm Dolly from Las Vegas. This is my story. Today I'm going to share it with you, but before hearing it, please like and subscribe to our Sun Slime channel for more stories. Okay, let's start it. Well, I was used to being called Crystal Girl just because I was so delicate and always at risk of being damaged. That's the reason why I had that nickname. In reality, my entire life was contained behind a bubble. When I was a little baby, I damaged my two small arms and sobbed uncontrollably. Mom went insane when she witnessed me wail and suffer as a newborn baby and she has only become crazier since then. Mom prevented me from doing everything, even simple things like going out, playing on the swings, making friends, riding a bike, swimming, and other activities like that which all kids can do to enjoy. Mom created a protective shield around me when I was seven years old and I grew up in a bubble. It wasn't easy to live like that. I'd never had any pals before. I'd never been to a birthday party, a movie, the beach, or a store. My entire universe was contained within those four walls of my home. Even I was educated at home by my mom. Mom played at being my classmate. Is there anything more creepy than that? But since she's my mother and not a girl, I couldn't pretend to play with her. So I begged her to go to school. Actually, I hate my life. After a few years, mom decided to replace the bubble models, so I had them air-conditioned. I had no word to descript my life. Oh my god, it's so, so, so tedious. But mom was getting more peculiar by the day. When I was nine years old, my mother accidentally left the front door open. I attempted to pass through it, but my bubble became stuck in the center of the door frame, trapping me for three hours. My neighbors all laughed at me when they saw me. However, something I'd never seen before approached. A little puppy. I was able to remove my hand from the bubble and contact it. It was the grossest and most thrilling thing so far when the dog drooled at my palm. My mother, of course, punished me by forbidding me from seeing the movie for a whole week. But then, the unimaginable happened when I was 12 years old. Mom took me out of that bubble and introduced me to a new acquaintance. His name is Aiden. We said hello and then mom gave us a list of prohibited things and another list of things that were allowed. What they get permission to do is play chess, do puzzles together, and watch documentaries about wildlife. When I complained about it, she looked me straight in the eye and said, take the list or I won't have any friends. Then Aiden quickly reassured her that everything would be all right. I was staring at him as if he was an extraterrestrial. Mom was the only person I'd ever seen up close. And she wasn't very attractive. Aiden had a dark complexion and emerald eyes, and when he spoke, he made exaggerated hand movements. He was on the verge of speaking with his hands. Aiden, on the other hand, hadn't seen many people. Yeah, maybe, but perhaps, but certainly not one like me. With my mother constantly staring at us, he became my best buddy. Chess helped us create a hidden language. We used chess pieces tapped on the board to create our own language. Aiden and I both fell in love after spending some time together. Without my mother's knowledge, he and I agreed to start dating. Aiden and I became inextricably linked. We conversed through telepathy. My mom developed a terrible cold one day. She sneezed and coughed constantly, but the cough syrup put her to sleep. Yes, it's time for me to get closer to Aiden. I much want to be. This is how I received my first kiss. My mother, on the other hand, found out not long after. She became tremendously enraged. Aiden was sent away right away because she was afraid he might infect me. I sobbed and pleaded with her to stop and not harm Aiden. My mother, on the other hand, seemed unconcerned about my remarks and yanked Aiden away like a dog. As a result, I was once again put behind my mother's chains and Aiden was never seen again. My heart is crushed, yet my mother seems unconcerned. I grew up to be a fairly quiet adolescent. I read the books that my mother had purchased for me since I didn't have many choices. When I saw a picture in a book, I imagined a parallel world within me. With my imagination, I was able to enter it. I was in the woods, brushing elephants and fighting lions. I flew to the moon on another occasion. I was an astronaut who successfully planted a flag on Mars. I was caught up in a terrifying narrative one not-so-fun day and swiftly fled. And after another two years, no one came to my aid. When I turned 16, I managed to convince my mother that I wasn't going to break into a thousand pieces. My method was not very conventional. I jumped on the table right in front of my mother. She then became frantic and urged me to stop talking because she was frightened I would break my arm. And of course, I ignored her, standing on the table and declaring to my mother that I was not made of glass. 
At this point, my mother was furious. Her face was red and her eyes were bloodshot. She shouted and threatened me to be punished. But that still didn't stop my dream of being free. I'm 16 years old. I can't stay in the bubble forever. Suddenly, my mother came back gently. She promised not to keep me in the bubble again, but on the condition that I take medicine to ensure my health. When I was wondering if I should take those pills or not, my mother told me not to worry because she would never harm me. I decided to take the medicine since this sounded better than the stifling bubble. But oddly enough, I began to feel weak and unable to get out of bed. Those days flew by like a nightmare for me. I was very terrified. I had no idea what was going to happen to me and my mother was growing crazier by the day. When I reached 17, I decided to stop taking my medicines. I was awake enough to start putting them aside in my mouth when mom gave them to me. Just when mom left, I spit them out and hid them in a jar. I felt better without the medications, but I couldn't stand it any longer. I planned to run to the railway station one night. I prepared a list of all the aspirations I'd been waiting to realize and had only imagined. To travel, parachute into a water park, learn to swim and swim in open water, run a garden race, sample unusual foods, make friends, avenge my mother, fall in love, and publish a book. All of these fantasies seemed unrealistic because I could only go with myself and my backpack. I had a financial emergency. I began singing on a street corner, and with the money I gathered, I was able to flee. I danced in the rain, made friends, and experienced firsthand what it's like to be alive. The prison term had finally come to an end. I climbed a cliff one day and felt like I could breathe freely since I was so far up. I remembered mom and all the things she made me miss by refusing to leave her house. I promised myself that I would never let anyone lock me up again. And of course, then I fell in love. The guitarist Ethan had an olive complexion and the most lovely honey-colored eyes. We were together for a month. He was also a fantastic travel buddy. I didn't want to be tied to anything or anybody, but Ethan didn't get it and walked away. I had a list of goals to achieve and that was all I was thinking about. I traveled a lot and did a lot of exciting stuff. I had an accident and broke down while competing in a go-kart race. That is not due to the fact that I am made of glass. It just happens when one lives. It strikes. But while I was unconscious, they called my mother. I saw her enormous on top of me as I opened my eyes for the first time following the accident. I was so exhausted. It seemed as though I had never known bliss or freedom before. My mother was nice and courteous to me in front of the doctor. She said, Dolly, my little one, take it easy. I've come to look after you. Take a look at where you've ended up. I gave her a terrified look and said I could take care of myself. I don't want her to take care of me. She made me feel sick. Then, mom grinned and stated that things wouldn't go my way due to the law and the fact that she had custody of me. And then she added that she thought the medication was confusing me a bit, that she was going to take care of me and that I should stay calm. And so on. This doctor is someone I can talk to telepathically because, you know what? It happened to be Aiden. Thank God, I'm as happy as if I had a life boy. This way we communicate with each other without my mother knowing. I begged Aiden to save me from my mother. And then he said that it was natural, that he would never leave me again. And luckily, my mother didn't recognize him at all. Aiden then turned to my mother and asked if she was responsible for me and informed me of the results of my examination. He gave my mother an x-ray film and said that I had a very bad fracture, so the doctors need to operate on me as soon as possible. At first, my mother lost her temper. She refused to listen to Aiden. She said that she must accompany me into the operating room because she did not want to be away from me any longer. Aiden comforted her and told her she was a devoted mother, and then he gave her a glass of water. We used a strong sedative to put mom to sleep. We left and left her off at the hospital. Aiden left a very clear indication. This patient must begin psychological counseling. And because of that, I exacted vengeance on my mom. And at the same time, I fell in love, and so I crossed wish numbers eight and nine off my list. Aiden proposed to me, but I refused because I was not ready for marriage yet. I still want to go experience many things. We have all the time in the world, and so we wrote a new wish list, but this time, together.